Hello, welcome to my page, Swin Addiction. Please like and subscribe, and I'll try to bring you more contents. Today, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna show you how to find uh, if you have a Swin, a real Swin, Chicago Swin, or a Repop. A lot of people buy frames. I've been seeing a lot of people buying frames, Repop frames, and claiming or selling bikes and claiming it's a Swin, <clears throat> or if it's original Swin and People selling repops and trying to pass it off as a 60s swing when it's really a 1990s and 2000s swing repop. Today I'm going to show you some characteristics to look for and what to look in a frame. Because they, the way they made them, Chicago swings, they were a lot better built back then. And a lot different, that made a lot different than, than the repops. The repops are pretty much like throw together Pacific cycle Taiwan bikes and they didn't have to they don't have the quality as the original Chicago Schwins and from back in the days but here's some things here's some badges right here I have and different different years had different badges so these are is what I call the shield badges they have like a, like a shield design there's different ones Swin made badges for Be of Goodrich. So um, it might not say Swin on it. But this is a Swin. <coughs> Swin built bike. Made by Be of Goodrich. Made for Be of Goodrich company. Here's a, another Swin shield. This one's uh, Henderson. This is Arnold and Swin, which is when they started, it was Arnold and Swin company. And then around 67 is when they just went to Swin by themselves so you'll see a lot of AS a lot of parts of AS are Arnold and Schwinn AS and Co so from pre-war all the way up to about 1951-52 is when they use these badges they're a little bit smaller the bolt holes are are a lot smaller than the next ones they use was the the large badges these are the large badges from 52, around 51, 52. I think about 51, you'll see bikes with, with bolt badges. You'll see some bikes with this badge and then some bikes with this badge. It was about 51 is when they done the transition. They switched over 52 to 59 is when they use these large badges. So the bolt holes is a lot bigger. You can see it. It's a lot bigger design. And then after 59, 59.60, 59.60, there's a transition. They went from the large badge and then they shrunk them down to the small badge. And these are, you can see, these are not, these are called non-Chicago because 60 to about 65 maybe, 64, 65, 66, they started putting the Chicago on them. So they won't have Chicago. These are non-Chicago, but when you say not Chicago, they're always talking about these badges. These are large badges, large badges, and not Chicago, small badges. <clears throat> so around late mid sixties to sev to seventies, they use these ones, the Chicago badges. So mid no mid sixties to, to mid seventies, they use these these badges. So it's pretty much the same thing, but the only difference in nineteen seventy five. They use the Julian date code right here. So you see these four digits right here. Let's see if you could zoom in on it. It says uh, 1466. So what that means is a lot of people, it's a date code and a lot of people don't know, understand how to read it. So the first three digits, 146, is the 146th day. And then the last digit is a six. So it would be that would represent 1976. So 146th day of 1976. And then you'll go, you could look up the Julian, it's called Julian date code. And you say, you look up 146th day of 1976 and I'll tell you exactly what date. This is, they stamped these the day the whole bike was assembled. So before they were stamping bikes, before they were assembled and then they, they assemble them. So a lot of these bikes will have a date on them. A a date stamp and pretty much it wasn't when they 
put the bike together is, is when they stamped it. They just stamped the part and then they made the bike. And then, but this date right here was the date that they actually finished assembling the whole bike and was, once the bike, whole bike was assembled, they stamped it. And then they set it out. So this was from 1975. So it'll, you'll see some with the five at the end. It'll say three digits and there'll be a five at the end. So it'll be 75, 75 to 1983 was what, when they sold the Schwinn. So that was the last year of the Chicago Schwins. So you won't see another, you won't see an 86. You might see, it might be look a little different than this. I think they changed it. The, like after they, they were still doing this a little bit, a couple years, but it wasn't exactly like this. The digits look a lot different. They're, you can tell they're, they're a little, little bit different. And then they won't say Chicago. So, because they weren't made in Chicago anymore. They are made in Taiwan and Pacific Cycle and all that. <clears throat> they went across the seas. So if it has to say Chicago and then it has a digit. You know, these are Chicago Schwinn. And then this is these other ones, the non-Chicago. And they had repops. They had non-Chicago repops, but you could tell the, the originals had the silver R. You see the R right there? The registered trademark was silver. The repops were black. So they'd be black like this, but they won't, they won't say Chicago on the bottom. So you could tell repops from that. So right here, before you, I got three frames, all 20 inch. From each from three decades, 1955, uh, 1963 Stingray, and a 1976 a full size. So when they start in 40s and 50s, they were making frames, Swin frames, pretty much the same exact. They've been making them the same exact way. This one has a large badge, so you know it's a uh, 52 to 59. So this is a 1955 frame. You can tell by the design, this original paint, and all the they're all pretty much they're made the same, exact same. So when I was about 13, 14, I bought a bunch of bike parts off this guy. He was selling lowrider frames, lowrider bike parts, and I just bought a whole bunch of stuff to make a bike, forks and frame. And my first bike was a 1964 Stingray, but I didn't know that at the time. Then I asked this guy, I, he's like, so I showed him the frame, and it was an older guy at the time. I was 14, he was probably, I mean, his 40s, 50s. And he's like, Yeah, you got a Schwinn right there. And I was like, For real? So I was like, How do you know? So he went like this, he got to, went to the frame, and he just, he showed me this right here. It's smooth. This is the, this is how you can tell it's a Schwinn. This is how I, this is what I fell in love with Schwinns. I love this, this design. No other bike, I don't like any other Schwinn, any other bikes other than Schwinn because I, I like this design right here, how this, how they made this, this, this is like a beautiful design right here, how they just transitioned it from here and it smoothed out into here and it just looks real nice and beautiful because <clears throat> so, you can't tell where the weld marks are, you, some bike companies just get a bar and a piece right here and they weld it and you see the weld marks right here, but not Schwinn. Schwinn, this head's piece is actually two pieces. If you look on this right here, they have a weld. This is two pieces, one, two. You, left, you got the left and the right. And they weld it right down the middle. And then they weld it right here and right here. You'll see the weld marks. So this is one, this is one big piece. And then you got two pieces welded together. And then you got the bar. This bar that welds into right here, the top bar that welds into right here. So that's how they. So if you look inside, you can see how smooth. If that's just one piece, and you can see the, you can see the the weld line going all the way down this right here, and you can see the weld line in on the inside right here. So that's so it's pretty much the same thing on all of them. They're all made the same way. In the 70s, 60s, the 50s, exact same way. And 80s, 80s the same way. 40s the same way. Another another way too is is the weld on kickstand. 
1950s. It's the same thing. Same exact thing. You get the Wild On Kicks in on the 60s. Same Wild On Kicks in 70s. The exact same thing. They just made a whole bunch of these parts. Just put them all together. They save money by just making this is this is one piece right here. So you weld right here, weld right here, one right here. This is one piece, and you same exact piece on all of them. Even the the, the beach cruisers, the 26 inch, and the smaller bikes, and every bike. These little pieces, these pieces, and these these end pieces are pretty much the same exact thing. You can make a thousand of these and use them on every single bike. They just weld it on right here. It looks like they'd be connected right here, but it's, it's just one piece all the way up to right here and all the way up to right here. And if you see, you can see this is the weld mark right here. This is where they connect. So you can tell it welds right here and it welds right here. So this is all one piece. So every bike from 1940, this is a new design from after, from post-war. They had these in pre-war, which is before the World War II, World War II, like 1941, 1942, they had them on a, a racer bike. It was, um, they, they started, they, they came out the design. The pre-wars, they didn't, the, this hole right here was going back and didn't look like this. There's only one bike that had the design and you can tell it's a pre-war because it doesn't have this tab right here. This is not, this is cut off. That's how you tell it's a pre-war. And then after the war, they had this. This is for your chain guard. So before the war, they didn't have this for the chain guard. What they done was they clamped onto the the chain guard. The chain guard came across and it clamps onto the frame. And they didn't have this hole. So pre-war, they didn't have this hole. And then after the war, they started putting on all the bikes. Every single bike started having this design. And then they have this for the for the chain guard. And so, and if you want to find out if you have a pre-war. It doesn't have this tab for the the chain guard either. This is gone. And this on the pre wars, these are gone because it clamps onto the frame. And then you have your chain guard, and it clamps onto the frame here and here. So it doesn't. There's no holes for chain guard. So if it has a chain guard, it's post war, which means after the war, they stopped making bikes during the war because they needed to save the metal and steel for for the tanks and ammo and all that and. So Schwinn stopped making bikes, and after the war, 1945, it, it pretty much started in 1945, but you'll see 1946 bikes, a lot of bikes coming out in 1946. It's kind of hard to date because from 1945 to 1947, 1948, 1945 to 1948, those three years, there were all, everything from before 1948 was lost. Everything was all the all the records were lost in the fire of 1948. So all records from all Schwinn records were they were lost, and you don't we don't know like what dates were built and all that. So that's why you get a lot of get a lot of conflict on those those um dating the Schwinn date code sites. And if it's older than 1948, it won't tell you how old it is. It, it'll probably say like it's 1955 or 1957. Which is conflicts, and if it's usually like if it's the the code is down here, 1951, the code's down here, and it'll come up as 1955. So it can't be right because the code bikes with these codes only went up to 1951. So it has to be 1951 and older. It can't be 1955. So that means it's it's an older bike. So you could tell you could tell the year by the characteristics like the dropouts and. If it has the the crank, if it's pre-war or post-war, whatever. But um, so this is so all bikes, all these bikes remain the same. See these drop this design you'll see you'll see on all all the swings. So the way they made it, they have the tab for the fenders, and then this is all the exact same thing, all the exact same thing. This is the E three. All the exact same things from 70s, 60s, 50s, all made the exact same way. And and for dating, 
if you try to find the, the serial numbers, 51, up to 51, will be down here. This is a weird one because I just noticed that, I just found out that this has numbers on the bottom, which is, which dates to 1955, which can't be possible because up to 1951, they had them down here and then they changed it to back here. And then you see the numbers are down, are back here. And then, which is weird because it, it gives the same day. This is this one and this one is the same day. It, it comes out as 1955. So I know this is a 52 and older bike. So 55 sounds legit. And I could tell by the head badge. The head badge and where the, the digits are back here. It's a 52 and older bike. So if, up to 51, they're back here. 52, they changed them back here. 52 to 59. And then 60. 60 and up. No, 1952 to 69. Because 70, I'm pretty sure that 70, they went up front. And they're right here. So you'll see. So 1970 and up. Yeah, 1970 and up. Okay, this is a GM. This is a July 76. But this is, but I tell you, they stamp they stamp these before they put them together because this is two pieces, a left and a right. So it looked like they had they put two pieces together that were two, two stamp pieces together. So I got one right here on top, and then one right here. So it looks like they got two stamp pieces and they put them together. Like they stamped them and then they put it together and then they put it on a bike. So they're probably just going by these. These ones are more, more, um, more readable than the other ones. The other ones are like dull and faded, but it pretty much come out the same month. Was, they're both GM. And then the numbers weren't too far apart. And then, so a couple ways you could tell to swim is the, the, the neck. There's one repop, one repop that comes close to this exact made was 1998s and 99s. And they, they have the same exact thing right here. They copy this, everything is pretty much the same. And if you, but you'll notice that the decal on the repops, they start from like back here and they go back. On the original, they start from up here, kind of in the middle. They're right here in the middle. The original are in the middle, and then the repops, they move them back. And then you have a sticker right here on top. You can tell it's a repop. There's like a white sticker, and then the decal's like farther back. So that's a repop. And then, but you'll still feel like this. It still look the same. It was like it was like the only like the first year the first repops that ever came out were the were exactly copies and then after that they're just they, was, they weren't the same they just held welds right here welds right here and this you see this tank design it's a lot different this, these bars come down a little bit more right here and it's all weird and it's blocked off block right here and it's a lot weirder it's not the same. So you go by the dropouts, go by the wild on kickstand, and go by the front. So the re repops. So what happens is the early, the fifties, they started with one digit, one one letter and a and a digit, so S zero. And then sixties, around sixty five was the first year. So this is a sixty three E three. So this is a sixty three. And then 65 was a double A. So it was A stands for 65. So it was a double double letter. And you notice that the GM 76 is it has a GM. That means it's a 76. The M, M stands for 76. The 3 stands for 63. The E is May. And this one. This one came out to be a 55 of June. It doesn't, it doesn't go by the same code like this. It's a different code. 
and that's pretty much it. This is a 76 set. I was doing a BMX build. These are welded on gussets. These are these are fabricated. And then the back. You do a BMX build. Makes straight straighten up the frames. A lot of the, the scramblers came like this. And the the 75, around 75, they started coming out the BMX bikes and they started started welding on the gussets and making them stronger and the early ones are considered shorty frames so they're a lot smaller from from here you can tell you can tell they're a lot smaller from right here so let's say this one is about two inches from the fender to the to the back to the seat post. This one's about the same. These are both shorty frames. Considered shorty frames. From 60s, the 50s and 60s, they're considered shorty frames. And then 70 or 68. They started they came out with the three speed, but it had a it had a lucky seven sprocket. It was a little bit bigger, so the three speed got a little bit bigger right here. You can tell the difference. It's almost two and a half inches. About two inches. And this is like three and a half almost. So you, you see the difference. So the frames got a little bit bigger, they widened up. They widen them up right here, and you see what you want to measure is is the distance from here to here. See how the, how much room is right here? See that's right in the middle. These shorter frames came with the Lucky Seven. The full size frames came with came with the Mag Sprocket. There's this kind, and then there's another kind, the Mag Sprocket that came on the the crates but they're like off they're like two like a couple teeth difference I'm pretty much the same size they're both bigger than the bigger than the lucky seven so you get and you can tell see the difference from here to where it curves up usually you can tell this is a full size frame it's a lot bigger frame See the difference right here? Not barely a finger. So a lot of these we came with the bigger frame, bigger sprocket. And that's where they meet up. You can tell the difference. If that's a full size or a shorty frame. They still they still kept making shorty frames in the 70s, but they're called juniors. The juniors are shorty frames. They're smaller frames. And then the re the regular stingrays there. There are large frames with the mag sprocket, so you could tell the, the size, the exact same dropouts, and everything. And you could tell the. Here's how to tell how old your sprocket is. These, this is an old. This is probably like a 60s, 50 to 60s. You could tell these are more sharper, and then you can see the group. The looks like it's grounded on the back. The older ones are grounded on the back, like they like they just sanded them down. Probably put on the grind belt and just held them down. And the newer, the sixties and up, seventies, they they're not like this. They're a lot smoother. There's a a fifties. There's a fifties skip tooth. This is a lucky seven. Same exact, same exact like you seven. This is a skip tooth. See, it's a, like a flat plate, thick, real thick flat plate. And then they change over real thin and kind of have an indent. So these are like the 50s. This is the 50s and early 60s styles.
think I have another one. But see, like this. If you look in the back, it's, it's not grounded down. The newer style, the newer style chain guard um, sprocket is not grounded. It's all chrome. Real nice. Just nice and bent. They're not as sharp. The teeth aren't as sharp and pointed. Here's a tooth on my 1955. You look. It's sanded. It's grinded down on the back. The teeth are real pointy. But that's how they done it. They just grinded it down. Try probably it was probably a little too thick, and they try to grind it down maybe or. Or maybe just put the way you stamp it and kind of let the burr so they kind of just grind it on the burrs. <clears throat> and that's a 55. 55s too. I like this. They say Schwinn right here. 55 to 63s. And I know some 63s came like that. That say Schwinn on the cups. But. And there you have it. If you got any more questions or and you want to ask me just go ahead write in in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible if there's anything else you want to know if you have a repop well another thing too on the repops what i was trying to say is the 50s they they, they had one letter and a, and a digit a number so it's a letter and a number and in the 70s they had the double double letters so it started with aa and then the repops had three letters so it'll say like J-A-K, like Jack, and those are repops. So if it starts with three three digits, and then they'll put them, they'll probably be under here. So it went from here to there to the front, and then the repops went back to right here with three three digits. So it'll say like J-A-K, and those are repops. They're probably, they're like 90, 98, 99 was the first year. Which they look exactly like this. The exact same thing. They're built the same way. And then they just went to crap. And they just. They look like every other Huffy. And every other bike made out there in Walmart. <clears throat> the quality ain't the same. And the chrome isn't the same. And they just. Within a couple of years. They, they look older than the original bikes. And they're all rusted. And falling apart. And people, a lot of people like to sell them for, for 300, 500 bucks because they think it's original. And when you try to tell them that it's not original, and they're like, they're stubborn and hard headed and they don't want to hear it. But if you got any questions, write, drop them in the, in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And maybe if we hit a thousand subscribers, I'll start giving away some vintage Schwinn parts and bikes and maybe um maybe we'll do we'll do a giveaway and have a lot of a lot of parts and stuff and this is not even this is like a third of parts i've have custom low rider i like low riders and ogs all the ogs little pixie 180 bucks if anybody wants to buy it maybe i'll give it away And please like and subscribe my page. And thank you for watching. And have a good day. Swin Addiction out.